listening to The Starting Zone, a podcast about World of Warcraft and the people who play it. And now, here are your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to The Starting Zone, the podcast about World of Warcraft and the people who play it. Today is April 19th, 2023, and my name is Spencer Downey. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to the podcast. I'm joined today, as always, by my co-host, Jason Lucas. Jason... How are you doing this fine Wednesday? We're getting closer Spencer, to hello. Tuesdays. <laughs> yes, we're moving it back a day. Actually, we got some uh, good info last night, so I guess it's a good thing we we weren't on the Tuesday schedule. Mm. You know, uh, we we do not plan this, but we've had some we had some good luck, I guess, the last couple of weeks with oh, our schedule is jacked up, but that also means that stuff makes it into the show that wouldn't have otherwise. So it's true. It's true. We'll, we'll take it. Had to wait you a know, week. Do, yeah. It makes us look really smart, you know, like we did this on purpose so that we could have this <laughs> good info. We have the inside you know. info on what's yeah, going on. It's hot off the presses, man, right yeah. on the TSZ air. So, um, but yes, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, we're in a really, really weird holding pattern waiting for patch, but, um, you know, it's not that far away. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that far away. Uh, I, and for me, it's actually worked out pretty well because I, I have been diving back into World of Warcraft this past week. I did more wow than i've done in quite a while i did at least over 20 hours of world of warcraft this past week um nice just sort of getting character stuff starting to get rolling again and getting settled and there was a lot of little discovery things which i thought was kind of neat because i mean i've i've been i haven't been doing a lot of grind right so reputations are really far behind there's a lot of things that feel like they're far behind uh and so it's been interesting to try and catch up but one of the things i didn't realize the most is just how gated a lot of the story content was behind renown and unlocking certain chunks of renown mm-hmm. uh yeah there's a bunch of different campaigns kind of unfolds yeah. like your covenant campaign a little bit but you can progress them at different stages you know and there's different ones that you can all do at once because i sort of turned my 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 direction towards my map and just like i need to clean up a lot of these quests like i just need to make sure that i just knock a lot of this stuff out that i hadn't been doing uh and so i started working my way through it and was like Oh, okay. I have to get Renown 19 to unlock that. And I have to get Renown 20 something to unlock that. And I have to get Renown. You're like, oh, okay. Wait a second. I'm really far behind on <laughs> this progress. And there's no really fast way to catch up and unlock the story content. I just literally have to put the time into grinding more reputation on a regular basis. Um, so yeah, that was that was a a realization that I hadn't had as much. Um, obviously, I had I been playing more frequently and focused on reputation when I was playing. Uh, I wouldn't be in this situation, but it's an interesting thing to think about from a returning player perspective of someone who might be coming back to the game or just starting out in the game at this stage right before the patch launch. Because this is this is that window of time where people are like, ooh, something new's good, you know, coming out. A lot of my friends are going to be hopping back and focusing on World of Warcraft uh, who might have sort of drifted off over the past couple of months. Um, so, you know, maybe I'll hop in and, and see what's going on with that. And you realize like, oh, well, actually, they're going to be gated in that sense of not being able to, to catch up storyline wise to find out what's happening in the story um, a lot of things aren't going to make as much sense because you can sort of hop in and do the raid content you can do lfr you can you know do the the um new new zone a new area you can do all that stuff right away but you are missing the renown to be able to do the story breadcrumbs that make that stuff make sense uh so that was a, an interesting discovery to sort of see happen um, that I was I was kind of surprised at. I, I think there should mm-hmm. be some sort of renowned catch-up mechanic, <laughs> perhaps, that is implemented in the game yeah. to help there, with things There like kind that. of is, right? Because now you have the, I don't know, are they emissaries? I don't know what they call them. That's yeah, a word that meant something else. But yeah. yeah, you have them at, out there on Forbidden Reach, and so that helps quite a bit. And then if you can like bank tokens and then use them when you have the, the buff, plus it's just an extra source of additional, you know, faction-specific reps. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, uh, some of it is there's just no substitute for for grinding it out right like that's kind of what i was doing early on was like all right let me go sit in in uh shikar hunts for a while mm. and you know i'll just i'll just hang out in the zone until uh, i kind of did one f- faction at a time there's somewhat grindable aspects for most of the rep factions but um yeah yeah uh, like forbidden reach adds some nice options but I guess that's the thing to do is like, all right, bank all your tokens. And then like, maybe at this point, like wait until dark moon fair comes back. Right. And then you, you know, pick your faction for the day and then use all of those tokens with all your stacked up rep bonuses. Um, I mean, obviously you'll get other rep just from completing quests or, you yeah. know, you don't yeah. get those like consumable tokens, but like hang on to those for when you can like max them out with bonuses. Yeah. I think what, what, 
I was really realizing, though, was from doing the story campaign that exists and doing the quests that I could find around the zones that I could find, it didn't put me in a really healthy, renowned place. And so I think the actual mm -hmm. quest content that exists, the static quest content in the game, uh, the stuff that you you know aren't doing daily quests for or, or you know weeklies for, um, could have probably used higher reputation. I, it, if for a system that as large as this renowned system is, I think if someone puts the effort into, okay, I've done my dailies, right? So I've sort of hit the rep cap for that. Um, I've done my weeklies, so I've sort of hit the rep cap for that. Can I get any more reputation? It's like, well, sure, there's the static quests that you can only do once. I think those static quest rewards could have been higher because I think that the baseline for where they set that, that bumps your renown to could have actually been a higher level um, as far as progressing the story along. So if you actually put the time into flying around the zones and finding all the little camps and the fisheries and the you know all the little fun places you can pick up quests to do those things, and you can get a lot of reputation from doing those things, uh, that that was uh, th those rewards sort of set you at a higher baseline of renown across the board. But anyways, that was one of the things I noticed. The other big one that I wanted to chat about was Catalyst, because obviously we talked last week quite a bit about how they are changing that system uh, making it more similar to what it was like at the end of Shadowlands, where you're able to get those charges um, essentially on a weekly basis, no matter what. And those charges are static in the sense that if you make a brand new character six weeks into when the Catalyst is open, that character will have six charges immediately available to them on the Catalyst. Uh, it's weird to have a Catalyst system for a, a character that has not been using it very frequently um, and be like, oh, guess what? I'm in a situation where I'm not going to have enough charges to be able to make a tier set before the new season starts and then the new catalyst shuts down so then I can't get a tier set at all unless it comes out of my box where I go back to the old raid. Uh, you are essentially locked out of getting tier pieces because of how the ch catalyst charges work. That's a really interesting problem to be running into. I hadn't really thought about that one. Um, now, I had a couple of tier pieces, and I, I got one from my vault this past week because I did Mythic Plus the week before. Um, so, I you know, I'm, I'm, I have my tier set, but it's just one of those cases of thinking from, like, a player perspective coming in two weeks before a patch launch because that tends to be when people start to come back to the game. You're in a position where you, you essentially, if you can't get into a raid and get lucky with drops, you just can't get your tier set, which means that you then can't have your character prepared for the new raid because everyone's going to be looking for people who have their tier sets going into that new raid content to be able to earn their new tier sets, right? So it's a weird situation to be in. I feel like they should either next week or or maybe, you know, on the actual, uh, the week before, um, so May 2nd, right? On, on that day, they should actually go, we're dumping 12 tokens or something into the current Catalyst system. Go and grab as many tier pieces as you want from the old tier set the thing is going to go away next week, right? We're essentially taking the catalyst away for six weeks, whatever it is next week. And then it'll activate again with new tier sets later on. I think that would make more sense to me than the way it's currently set up because it's weird to put characters in a position where they just can't have their tier set bonuses going into a new season. Like that's, that's a strange position to be in. Yeah, I, I think ultimately, like, obviously the dev team feels that the experiments around that stuff, uh, specifically with the Catalyst this season, were a failure. Otherwise, it wouldn't be reverting yeah, them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it does. I, I mean, my main concern with it at this point, I guess, is Transmog, right? Because I have, at this point, like, I have the four tunes that I've leveled up and have kind of messed around with in this content, and they all have four set bonus, so... I'm not really looking at it from that perspective, although there was some, I had to do some calculus there, right? Because I had to think about, okay, before I turn in the quest to earn my account wide charge for the week, do I have everybody at max level? Who's going to be there? Right? Like, should I wait? Right. Oh, I had one week where I had to wait to turn that in because I didn't want to hit it before I leveled up a character I was working on. So I could soak out some charges on the catalyst. Right. It's just counterintuitive. It makes you yeah. do weird stuff. It makes you approach the game weirdly. So I'm glad it's going away. And yeah, it would be awesome if they would do what you, something like what you said, at least for you know maybe the in between week, like the yeah, the, May 2nd the ramp week. up week of patch yeah. but no season. Like yeah, just infinite charges on on the catalyst or something. I mean, because one thing I haven't seen spelled out really specifically is. You know, how are the catalyst charges going to differentiate, if at all, between season one and season two gear? 
am I going to have to use season two charges to get season one transmog if that's what I want to do? Um, I, I know that's a relatively minor concern. And at first, like the, you know, obviously the charges are going to be important for season two gear. But if I roll into season two with, you know, five, six bank charges from season one, I assume they just get cleared. I, you know, they're not going to be season yeah. two charges. Yeah. Can I use them for season one gear, you know, catalyzing? I, I don't know. And that sort of just indicates all of the weird problems with uh, also with having the cap on like the, the cap on charges was just that was a weird decision. And having to, you know, earn the unlocks and, and yeah, it's just not. It's not what we want. I don't think it actually serves the purposes of the system. So I'm glad it's going away. I, it would be awesome if they would throw some kind of bone here in the in the last couple of weeks of of the Vault of the Incarnates uh, catalyst, for lack of a better way to describe it. Yeah, my assumption is that when we hit May 2nd, the catalyst is going to shut down and you're going to lose all the charges that are in it. That's my assumption. Now, we you haven't, know, makes as you said, we haven't seen anything that, t that talks about that yet. Uh, and we hope that this week, maybe Thursday or, you know, Friday this week, we see a blue post announcing, hey, guess what? Use up your charges because they're going to go away. But I I mean, I, I, I personally think that just giving everyone, just setting everyone to the max amount of charges, I think it's five, right, is where the, the cap is. Just setting everyone to... It's at six. It's six. At six. Okay. But so, yeah, it's, yeah, so just, it's like just, enough to do, you know, a full four piece and then a couple more. It's, it's like yeah. an arbitrary cap. It's very weird. Yeah, so, so I, I think setting everyone to the cap, setting everyone to six going into next week would just make sense. Just be like, give everyone six charges across all, all characters that are max level, all characters that have unlocked the system. Just everyone gets six charges. If you happen to unlock the system, you know, during next week, that's fine. It gets, you get set to six charges. Like, I, I think that just makes the most sense to me because doing it any other way just puts people in a situation where it's like, hey, I'm, I have a new character or I'm returning to the game and I'm excited for the new content, but I'm essentially in a situation where unless people feed me tier pieces, uh, you're just not going to get your tier set going into the next season, which means that you're just not going to have your tier set going into the new raid and going into the new M plus yeah. and everything else, which... And just, that is a huge disadvantage. Yeah, like, it's even though it's, disadvantage. it's outdated gear, like you'd yeah. rather have it than not have it by a yeah. long shot. Well, it's going to be better than any gear you currently could get until the new season launches. And even yep. then you're going to take a, a while to replace those pieces because the tier sets are so powerful that it tends to be that they take a while to replace. It's that or you'd have to just turn off tier set bonuses, right? It's the, the other option would be see, season right. two launch. You just turn off everyone's tier set bonuses, but then all the content has to be tuned for that. Right. And all the classes yeah, still have that. to have playability. So people would have a huge outcry yeah. about it. So yeah, I, I, I know we're taking a bit more time at the front of the show than we normally do to talk about wow stuff, but uh, as far as like talking about our, our past and previous experiences, but this, these are just two topics that came up for me this past week of of playing a lot where I was like, man, the the, the walls and gates in this first patch mm -hmm. really do not help players who are trying to catch up um, unless they're trying yeah. to catch up over a long period of time. Like you're accepting like, oh, yeah, <laughs> right, I'm going right. to try and catch up with World of Warcraft and, and hop with my friends. So I'm willing to dedicate the next five weeks to doing that. You're like, oh, well, <laughs> actually, yeah, I started catching you know, up for the May patch in February. Exactly. Or right. Like, like yeah. you know, that's that that seems strange to me. Uh, it should be something yeah. where the two weeks that lead up to a patch are the weeks that can really help people accelerate their character's progression. So they're going into the new patch feeling maybe not on the same power level as their friends, mm -hmm. but at least like they're viable and, and you know, they, they, they have right. uh, they have what they, they need, the essentials they need to participate in that content. Yeah, I mean, this is the first. This is an unprecedented moment, actually, when you think about it, for like a, a WoW patch season roll, because we've never had the catalyst exist in an environment where we're rolling one set bonus into another. Yeah, from season three to season four, Shadowlands, like you did have that, but the set bonuses were all the same. Yeah, and you get higher item level versions of the gear if you were doing faded stuff, but the catalyst just all carried over, and it was all the same thing. And you had this a ton is, of charges. You had a ton of charges. Yeah, they point. were they were banking up like every couple of days by yeah. the end of it, and it yeah. was all globally. You didn't have to do anything. Um, this is a whole different story because now you have the, this, you know, this literally a tiered system. You have the vault tier and you have the abris tier, and it's different gear. The set bonuses are different. You use the catalyst in a similar way to convert the pieces to activate the bonuses, but you know we've never we've never seen these systems kind of mesh in this way before even though we've had, you know, they've both existed for like a, at least a year now with the Catalyst and everything. But it was a lot different rolling Season 3 and Season 4 Shadowlands than Dragonflight Season 1 and the 2. So, um, 
I don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like as far as that stuff goes. I'm just I'm just glad they they scrap the idea of earning the charge, and we'll see what we'll see about the cap. I I still haven't seen anything in blue text about you know uh, a charge cap on the catalyst, and I, I hope they don't do one. I, I think it defeats the purpose of the system at a certain point. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I, I get that they want to try different stuff, and that the concept of the catalyst was new, and they wanted to try tweaking it and. I don't, I, you know, I can't fault them for that, but I, I think the Dragonflight Season 1 experiments just ultimately made it a worse experience. Yeah, so the, the only other tip I want to put out there for people who might be hopping back into the game a little bit more actively and, and maybe were active or weren't as active early on in the season uh, is dragon riding, um, maxing out that system going into the next patch is going to be huge. If you have not put the time into downloading TomTom Tom or some sort of, you know, a similar add-on, and going over to Wowhead and copying and pasting the coordinates in for all of the different tokens you have to fly around and grab to max out your dragon riding. Do it. Take the two and a half hours or whatever it is throughout the week to actually cap out your dragon riding. Um, I did it this past week. I've, I've been flying around with four vigor for a long time on my dude. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> I can't even, I don't want to go back there. See? See? Um, no, yeah. Just being like, yeah, you know, it's, it's fun and it works and whatever, but when you max out that system, like, I mean, you aren't, it, it really is something where you can fly from one end of, of the Dragon Isles to the other without stopping, and it feels incredibly fast, and every other swarm of flying feels incredibly slow. Um, it's hard to go back and do anything old world. It's hard to go back and do Mythic Plus in any of the older zones and have to fly around on a normal flying mount after experiencing dragon riding with the six charges and all of the speed em ups and everything else that uh, that goes around with it. Because um, it's just such a, a game changer for for movement. It reminded me a lot of um, a lot of the other systems what the devs have developed over time, including you know looking back at Shadowlands, the mission table. Uh, design system where they basically designed everything around a fully completed maxed out system and then scaled things back from there and then didn't realize how long it would take players to get to the maxed out system and then there was a ton of pain points along the way that's what dragon riding reminds me of at a maxed out system it's incredibly fun and useful and you can do so much with it and it's easy and it's great in that sense when you start taking chunks away from it because there's a talent system involved and there's, you know, these tokens you have to fly around and grab. And yes, they're very accessible, which I think is great that, you know, essentially if you're willing to put the time into like sitting on a cliffside and then flying up a level and sitting on a cliffside to eventually get to the top of it to be able to get the thing that you want, um, you can do that and, and get the system unlocked. But you start taking those chunks away and it feels worse and worse and worse, like ex exponentially. It's just, it, it is a very noticeable thing, so... I, uh, I, I, I encourage everyone who has not taken the time to get all their tokens and everything for dragon riding, or if you're just popping back into the game for the new patch, whatever it is, just like take the time to do it. Your life will be infinitely better inside of uh, dragon flight for sure. Yeah. If you're, if you're coming back after a long absence or you're new coming back for this patch, yeah, do that first, get handy notes, handy notes. will put all of them, including, um, other uh, forbidden reach ones on yeah. your map and then yeah just go get them and go do that first before you start doing anything else like yeah. there's really nothing restricting you from doing that as soon as you unlock um dragon riding so yeah and we're getting we're getting more new stuff with dragon riding uh in two weeks with patch so yeah um good you know make sure you're caught up on that so that you can get right in there and, and get the new glyphs and get the new uh the new abilities and stuff yeah all right jason what did you do this past week in world of warcraft well, um, not a whole lot. Um, we are we are seriously on a one one night a week raid schedule at this point. Um, when we had spoken last, it was actually Thursday, so we had already raided last week's reset and then not raided on Wednesday. Last night we full cleared heroic vault, and it was pulling teeth to get Raz down. I was on such a skeleton crew; it was kind of unbelievable. Um, mm. But you know, bosses one through seven were fine. Raz is the hardest boss in, in the place, and. With a small group, you can't afford people not carrying their weight just straight up. You can't afford people just zoning out and getting killed with a breath or something or mm -hmm. in phase one, like your pull is just sunk. You can afford that with, you know, 30 people maybe, but if you have some real all-stars, but, you know, we put it back down and I, I we're probably done for the week. I, I'm willing to consider like a Sunday evening raid if we have signups, if people want to bring alts to just kind of, you know, hang out and, and have fun, but um you know, uh, just not a lot going on with rating. I don't have people showing up. There's, we're not we're not going to be pushing a new mythic boss in the last week here. Um, 
the goal at this point is to get achievements done. So next week we'll prioritize doing, you know, we'll go in on normal mode and, and just do the achievements. That'll be fun. I, I haven't heard any, you know, horror stories about the vault achievements. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, with Keystone stuff, like just, I don't know if I'm going to run any Keystones this week. If I am, I might be full pugging. I, I have a couple of my guys showing up, but they're not real motivated. I couldn't even feel the full guild group to run anything last night after raid. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, luckily I did what I needed to do with this season. I may have to retool next season um, as far as my like set group goes and, and maybe figure out like who's actually motivated to play and who can make the commitment to put the time in. Um, we're in that spot right now where like just the way that my guild works and the way the structure is like, I don't know who I can expect on May 9th to be online and motivated to play and do raid prog mm. and start working our way up the ladder for mythic plus and working on those ports. Like I don't know who I have. That's going to be actually willing to do that because the, the drop off has been so severe in the last month or so. Like I'm it's almost, I've almost never seen it like this. So hmm. I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that affects my approach. You know, maybe I say, okay, like this is just what it is. And I don't really want to go too far outside the structure to find people to play with. So maybe my expectations dial back, I guess we'll see how that goes. Could be. Um, I mean, unfortunately, I, like work has been killing me lately, and I just haven't had time or motivation to do what I want to do with my alt. So I still have a. I still haven't done my druid's ring yet, and my paladin is a mess. Um, I'm hoping maybe I, you know we still got a couple weeks here, so maybe I can get some time. It's not going to take much time. It's just, it takes a level of time and energy that I just have not had the last couple weeks. I want to. I want to have those guys decked and ready to jump right into ten dot one and and have fun with them, but. Um, I just i i don't have i just don't have the, the the slot for it right now. So hopefully it opens up soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I'll hop in with you guys this week at some point or next week for some mem plus or some heroic raid or whatever. We'll see how it all goes. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's been a minute. We should do yeah, that it's been if a we bit. can. Yeah, we'll see if we can get going. All right, with that, let's hop into what's going on this week in World of Warcraft. All right, this week is the Legion time walking event. We're coming to an end of the time walking era. We only, you know, we're, we're getting to the end of that. Anyway, so it's one of your last chances to uh, take the benefit of the heroic piece of vault gear that you can get for completing five time walking dungeons. Uh, obviously, Legion reputation bonuses are increased by 50%, and uh, characters can do Black Rook Hold, Court of Stars, Dark Heart Thicket, Eye of Ashara, Naltharian's Lair, and Vault of the Wardens. Of course, there's also the uh, toys and mounts and cosmetics and stuff for your tokens uh, over in uh, Legion Dalaran, if that's something you're looking to pick up. Um, there isn't like a raid associated with this time walking yet, but Jason, which raid would you want to see associated with this time walking from Legion? Uh, Tomb of Sargeras. Yeah. I think Tomb of Sargeras is one of the coolest raids ever. I, I mean, Legion was a great expansion. It will always hold a special place in my heart. And I think the raids in there were good. Uh, like Nighthold was really good. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and Taurus was okay. I think it was a little too big for its britches. Maybe it didn't quite deliver on like that super epic experience for me, but um, Tomb of Sargeras was kind of like exactly what I wanted. I thought it nailed the theming so well. And the last two fights are, are I think, some of the best boss fights they ever put in the game. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how they would translate the time walking because like Kill Jaden was a great fight on Heroic and it was a mediocre fight at best on Normal. Like They just gutted it yeah. on Normal to yeah. the point where like it didn't really make sense. Yeah. And I you kind of think that they would go with the Normal version for time walking, right? They want to make it more accessible. Maybe. I mean, I, I described when, when we were talking, I still remember the conversation we had when we were talking about Cold Jaden fight when it was actually there and we were talking about LFR, normal, heroic and mythic. Uh, we were talking about how mythic was the entire complete fight. It was one of the first times I talked about this where mythic was like the complete fight. And then when they went to heroic, they removed mechanics. And then when they went to normal, they removed more mechanics. When LFR, they removed more mechanics. So as opposed to scaling back the the difficulty of the mechanics, but leaving them all in there or leaving a lot of them in there, they actually just removed them entirely uh, on top of scaling stuff back, which meant that, you know, I, I, I kind of liked at the time, I remember talking about at the time, liking that it meant there was this build of the, the expectation where players would start at a lower tier of difficulty and work their way to the higher one. And so every time you work to the next tier of difficulty, you only had to learn one or two new mechanics. You already knew how the rest of the fight worked, um, which I think was really neat and sort of made sense. But given how players raid, 
in the sense that the majority of players raid a difficulty, right? There's normal people who raid normal raids and people who raid heroic raids and people who raid mythic raids and the people who raid heroic raids sometimes dabble into a couple mythic bosses and people who raid normal sometimes dabble into a few heroic bosses, but rarely do you have a team that starts in normal, clears through normal, goes into heroic, clears through heroic, goes into mythic, clears through mythic over the span of the season, unless those teams are mythic teams, in which case they then phase out those earlier difficulties very, very quickly. Um, and I don't think they actually gain a lot of benefit, the mythic teams, from doing the earlier difficulties outside of gear, because they understand the mythic fights, or at least the majority of mechanics for the mythic fights, before they even get to the heroic ones. Um, a lot of the time with the amount of research that goes into uh, some of the teams there. So I just think it, it affects very few people. So I, I'm with you that I think if they put in the normal version of that fight, it would feel unfortunate because it just feels so incomplete by comparison to what the actual mythic fight felt like. Yeah, that said, um, in the uh, in the time walking pool, you can get a little preview of Nels Lair. It's true. That, that is a season two Keystone dungeon. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh this week i i'm i'm really looking forward to that being in the keystone pool and i don't know talk to me in, in two months and see how i feel about <laughs> how it's tuned to Dude, everything but uh, like Nell Slayer is one, dungeon. Of, one of my favorite dungeons and just like the theming of it and mm -hmm. sort of the story that it tells as you progress through i think it's super fun great voice acting um i just i i really uh, enjoyed the drug bar characters throughout uh legion and i'm glad we're getting to see more of them in this upcoming patch and I mean, come on, it's, it's the Neltharian patch. You got to have Neltharian's lair in the pool. So if you want to get a feel for what that dungeon is laid out like and maybe what what it might look like on Keystone, it might be radically different, you know, as a, as a 2023 Keystone versus a 2016 Keystone. But yeah, that's that's in the pool. I'm, I mean, this is the thing I haven't I haven't been able to take enough advantage of. I didn't do anything last week with, with the Warlord's time walking. I didn't get in there on anybody. I just didn't have time. And it sucks because it's this is really good gear for free. It's good XP if you want to level up from 60 to 70. Um, and yeah, like I just, I haven't been able to take advantage of it, unfortunately. Yeah, Null Slayer is the one, it is the one that has the uh, the pillar puzzle that you have to solve during the boss. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> yeah, he like goes under the ground and like the yeah. stone fists come up and yeah. it's like, it's like a shell game kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be interesting on Mythic Plus for a lot of people, I think. Um, well, no, they'll just like make that. a weak aura that does it for you, oh, and then right, Blizzard right, will right. break the weak aura, yeah. and then, yeah, <laughs> the, 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 we'll have that back and forth for a couple of weeks. Yeah, for a couple of weeks. That's exactly what will happen. Oh, my goodness. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. All right. Uh, the weekly event this week is the Pet Battle bonus event, where the sign of the Critter buff is up. You get that extra experience from uh, Pet Battles, as well as, obviously, the very best quest, which is winning five PvP Pet Battles to get a training stone that instantly levels a pet to level 25. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in hopping into, hop into some pet battle stuff. Um, you obviously want to do your your eating the accord for the 3K rep, and this week it's about participating in a community feast, um, and then you get your rewards uh, chosen after getting that 3K rep and participating in the feast for the eating the accord. Uh, we have Nelco Defensive and Azure Vault for our dungeon quests, and we have uh, random BGs, rated BGs for your PvP quests. Uh, the brawl this week is Cooking Impossible, which is actually one of my favorite brawls. Um, not not like it's probably my top four i would say it's like number three or number four in my brawls uh where nomi is you know back in the valley of the four winds and there's two cooking pots and it's about who can cook the feast the fastest and you have to get ingredients for those pots by running out into the fields and either killing yaks or plucking out you know vegetables from the garden and running them back and throwing them into your pot while the other team's doing the same thing but you can interact with the other players and by interact i mean you can kill them um, by, you know, running around and fighting them and knocking them back and trying to disrupt their feast while you make your own, and it's whoever completes the feast first. So this is actually one of the more fun brawls. I really like this one a lot. Yeah, super fun. Uh, super, uh, I was going to say flavorful, which is, like, not... It's I don't mean to tasty brawl, like, man. To, yeah, like, no, that's not <laughs> what I'm trying to do I, I, at all. Like, that's not my intention. I just mean, like, it's Nomi, right? Like Nomi's the main character of this. And so the theming is just so strong. It's super fun. Um, yeah, I, I like this one. It's, it, it gives you a chance to do something different than just sort of out duel your opponent in a traditional PVP combat sense. There's other jobs that need to be done uh, as part of the flow of, of this brawl. So yeah, that's why I like it. And it's, it's fun to play a tank class and something with, you know, some CCs lockdowns and, and you know displacements or something you know drop like a 
ring of peace or, or a fear bomb or something on the enemy's cooking pot. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so if you're famished for some new content, maybe you can sink your teeth into this brawl this week. Uh, all right. Stop. No, stop. <laughs> so uh, the uh, the weekly world boss for the week is Bazuel, the Dreaded Flame, the Fire, Proto Drake, and Azure Span. You get yourself some 395 loot, plate, wrist, male feet, leather waist, cloth, chest, and a heavy haste ring with uh, crit on it. So if you're looking for any of that, actually my tune could use that ring, so that would be kind of nice. Uh, Mythic Plus affixes for the week are Fortified Bursting explosive oh my god this is brutal so <laughs> oh geez i read I've, I've already run three mythic pluses this week because it's wednesday right so i was i was on for a little bit yesterday doing some m plus this is it is painful to do some of these keys uh with fortified where uh bo non-boss enemies have more health and inflict increased damage bursting when slain non-boss enemies cause players to suffer damage over time and this affects stacks and explosive where while in combat enemies periodically summon explosive orbs that will detonate if not destroyed the first day, like a Tuesday, and this always, always happens with Mythic Plus, if you're doing pugs, which I was, uh, people forget that explosive is a thing. They just forget that it exists and that, so, so your tank runs in and does the regular pull they always do, and they pull nine mobs uh, right off the bat because they expect a heroism or some sort of big, you know, everyone has their cooldowns, whatever it is, uh, and you get nine explosive orbs. And you can manage to get three of them. And then the other six go off and wipe your entire group. And you're like, okay, yeah, that was that was a thing. Uh, and on top of that, this week, obviously, you're dealing with uh, Fortified. So all of the uh, AoE spells that adds cast are obviously going to be pumped up and doing more damage. When they die, they then burst. So that big nine pull where everything then dies at the same time also wipes your group because bursting then just kills everybody. Um, and it's it, it can be an ugly week. Uh, this is, this is uh, as a warning, uh, this is our last Fortified week. We're not going to get another Fortified week this season. So if you want to get Fortified done for your Chivo stuff, start working on it now. I don't think the May 2nd week, which is the, the in-between week, I think that's the off season. I don't think that will count towards achievements, but it might. Uh, we still have to sort of figure that out. Yeah, it counts towards some of them. It, it kind of depends on what you're shooting for, right? If you're right. going for the end of season rating, then you have to do that. This is your last Fort week yes. to push rating yeah. for end of season stuff for other stuff like um you know the the rating based achievements or the teleports they will be available in that off season week from what we've been told up to this point um but yeah if you're looking for the the title for end of season like this is your last fort week to push rating and yeah it's a doozy this is a perfect this week's combo with thundering layered on top yep. of all this is a perfect example of why I am looking forward to the affix rework for season two. Yes, <laughs> like, agreed. This is, this is just yeah. like who wants to do no coup defensive with fort bursting, explosive thundering. You know, like I mean, it's, Jade it's Serpent's just bad too, man. Like they're yeah, there's it, a lot of bad they're ones. they're all they're all yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, they're it's all bad. It's just not it's yeah. not a good week. I mean, you get yes, you do get a bit of a of a reprieve on bosses. They are still going to drop explosives, but most bosses in this pool are like one target that you're in range of all the time. So yeah, it's not that big of it's a very minor distraction, and bursting isn't a factor. So that's good. Like but the bosses are are relatively straightforward. You do still have to deal with thundering in the area denial associated with that. Um, but yeah, not a uh, not a great week. It is it is kind of a hard sell. This is not how you want to go out this season. Yeah, you know, you, you yeah. kind of would like to see something easier line up with the end of season. But um, I mean, it's just it is what it is, right? The yep. affixes make the dungeon harder. That's that's what they do. So um, I don't know. I'm just I'm glad I got everything that I cared about done because <laughs> uh, I would not want to have to be like hoping I could slam a a jade serpent or a halls of valor this week or something yeah um so good luck out there if there's something you still need uh, i mean it's not undoable you just gotta you gotta be coordinated you gotta have people on point with explosives and you gotta coordinate out when stuff dies for bursting yeah you know a well-coordinated group can certainly deal with this and can and can counterplay it but um yeah it's just not it this is it's just a gnarly trash week it is it's a gnarly week indeed uh, and from the three M plus that I did yesterday on, on in pug stuff, it was gnarly. There was there was definitely a, a temple of Jade Serpent where people just gave up before we hit the first boss because the tank was just outrageously pulling, and no one was killing explosives, and it was just like okay, this mm -hmm. is a run back fest for a lot of people. So you're like, yeah, yeah, people need to understand how 
these different affixes are going to dramatically change how you actually do your dungeon. And when you add bursting in, that changes it. When you add explosive in, that splits people's focus. And when it's a fort week, people are taking more damage from all the trash stuff anyway. So if you stand in something or a cast gets off, that was the biggest thing we were suffering from is people just not interrupting stuff. And it's like, well, fortified mobs mm-hmm. who are casting hurt. Like they just do. And yeah, and you have those water ellies in that hallway, yeah. and you want to have people LOSing their their one un- uninterruptible cast if yeah. they can, and if they're not doing that on Fort Week, like they're going to be getting rocked. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's tough, man. It's um, it's it's a, it's kind of like I, I mean that's the biggest thing is that you need coordination to succeed in in you know at higher keys, and this is this is a week that's really gonna test your group coordination and that that could mean bad things for a pug that's not you know communicating or that people aren't aren't queuing up with like a good understanding of what's going to be expected of them yeah exactly uh all right we also have volunteer guard day kicking off next week so we want to be sure we're giving people a heads up this week about it because it's just a one-off uh this and is... we have no idea what we're going to record next week so well there's <laughs> just, that in, just in yeah. case there's not time to let let it bake yes we do have a, a micro holiday coming up yeah and basically uh you can head into town you can salute a guard there um it basically transform you into the appearance of one of the city guards which is kind of cool uh so if you go into I, I think this now works in most cities but you can do it in stormwind and Ogremar for sure that's where we've always sort of talked about it happening um you basically gain the city guard buff and uh you get a, a title that's read as the city of and whatever the actual city is uh, defender and as as you sort of defend the city more and more against invaders you become the heroic defender or the mythic defender you don't keep the titles they're just a temporary title but it's a fun thing to do if you you know aren't looking for something to sit around and do as a silly thing or my biggest thing is if you haven't finished your journal for the month you know this this will be worth journal points it's going to happen on the 28th it's right mm-hmm. at the end of the month so if you're like hey i you know still need to do something i'm sure this will be worth 100 150 points whatever it is um, and you can sort of finish off your, your reward for the, uh, month just by doing volunteer guard day, which would be nice. Yeah. That's a good thing to point out. Like this is, you know, this is fun. It's a little time waster, you know, there's really not much to it, but it's, it's, it's kind of cool to do if you're waiting for your friends to log on or whatever. Um, or yeah, if you need to finish your traveler's log for the month, then you're already in Stormwind or Orgrimmar and you can go right over the trading post with, you know, having your bar filled up. So yeah. how convenient is that? Um, you know, that's, that's, that is one cool thing that they've done with, um, the concept of the traveler's log. Like if you're a regular player, you know, you can kind of complete it without really going outside your schedule too much. I find like just from killing raid bosses, doing dungeons and the other stuff I do, I normally just complete it without even noticing, but you know, they've integrated the, the progression on it with stuff around holidays and micro holidays. And there's just all kinds of different ways to integrate that, you know, all these, all, all this stuff, all these different gameplay styles that they've added in a while over the years. And, tie it into this bigger reward structure it's pretty cool so yeah if you're like oh man you know how am i going to get my log done for for april like just you know log in on on friday next week and and go to your faction capital and you'll get there yeah uh hot fixes for the week uh warlock got well fixed let's say uh they discovered some unintended functionality with multiple warlock talents that they are fixing those now before the next season starts uh they expect the impact of these fixes on a player power to be minor but they'll monitor to make any further adjustments if necessary. They fixed an issue where Summon Soul Keeper could be cast while moving. Um, hey, could you just make more spells castable while moving? That'd be great, thanks. I'd like to go the other way. Uh, and then in Demonology, they fixed an issue where uh, Immutable Hatred would benefit from Grimoire Felguard, uh, where Reign of Tyranny applications would not be removed if a demon despawned out of line of sight, and where Immutable Hatred would persist while untalented. Yeah, if you untalent yourself from something, you shouldn't still benefit from it. That's not great. So, yeah. Uh, I'm, you know. <laughs> Warlock has just been, like, shockingly broken in this patch. Apparently, yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I guess it's gotten to the point where everything else is straightened out or they're at least like, okay, it can wait till 10.1. But, yeah, Warlock is still, like, stuff is is, cast, is castable on the move when it shouldn't be. Talents are active when they're not, you know, selected. Yeah. Uh, it just all kinds of wackiness going on with uh, Warlock and with, with, I feel like with Demo most specifically. Mm. Well, uh, the next blog post we want to chat about is actually about the mysteries of Zeralek Cavern. It's going to be the new zone that's underneath of the Dragon Isles, which is actually kind of a neat concept that I really like, uh, that you have this whole underground 
um, well, I guess area, it's not really a city, it's an underground area that you can sort of fly through with multiple different hubs in it. Uh, and this blog post goes into some detail as to how to actually get there. So to reach there, you're going to have to complete the Embers of Neltharian campaign that will put you onto the path which guides you down beneath the Dragon Isles and into the vast underground world. Uh, the entrances of Zerlac Cavern lie within the chasm between Valdraken and Ar Naran Plains and are visible on your map. The journey is long, so be sure your drake is well rested. In other words, hey, those dragon riding tips I gave you, you're going you're gonna to want some dragon riding vigor to be able to be able to do this. Um, and also those things I mentioned about completing the campaigns and getting through all the storyline. Yeah, that's another thing too. Hmm, interesting. Maybe they should have some sort of catch-up mechanic <laughs> involved for players who have to finish the Embers yeah. of Maltharian campaign in order to go into the new zone, you know? That might be an important thing that they uh, they get done for players. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's weird how they phrase this, because are we l literally going to complete the patch campaign before we get into the zone? Or, or, or like, I, I feel like this isn't described properly in this post. It might not be, yeah. Like... Uh, you would think that the, there's like a breadcrumb that kicks off the embers of Neltharian campaign questing that leads you into the zone. That's sort of more my expectation. It's so like, okay, here, you're here, completing literally a quest and then starting, you know, then you go into the cavern. Yeah, as here's, part of the here's my guess. The first quest that you get is called Embers of Neltharian. So the reason why they right. say complete yep. the Embers of Neltharian campaign is it's probably like, here are three quests that is chapter one of the story, and that is called Embers of Neltharian. And the next ones are like the fires yeah. of Neltharian or something, right? Like it's now you've burned the embers of who, whatever it is. That's the next chapter. So my guess is that's what you're doing, and it's like a three quest intro thing. Um, I am I am hoping <laughs> though that this is something that they incorporate some sort of catch up storyline wise behind, because it is very weird for players coming into a patch cycle and going. I don't even know what's going on with dragons, but this is the most recent content and that's where I'm going to get the highest gear and the newest stuff and the newest mechanics that I need to have unlocked. So I'm just going to skip all the other story and just hop into Embers and Altharian. Um, I, I, I kind of wish that they do something to catch people up on the renowned locked stuff so that they can understand story better when they head into the new story that's coming out as opposed to going... No, no, I need to take six to seven weeks to unlock the Renown quest stuff so I can understand what's happening in the new stuff that just dropped. That that I dislike. So That's true, but also, if the 10.1 patch story is any good, it has to work self-contained, too. So, sure, like, yeah. Like, yeah. There are bits and pieces in the Veldrak and Accord campaign that you probably want to go through. Like That would be the main thing I would try to maybe farm, or like if you could choose a rep reward, go with that, if, if you haven't finished all the campaign questing in there. Um, but overall, like if the story doesn't work in contained in the patch that it's released in, I think that's just a miss anyway. So, um, you know, hopefully, I, I mean, we did see, um, as part of this announcement and post last week or the other day, whenever it was, they did put out like the intro cinematic for 10.1 up on the YouTube, which is, which is pretty cool. So, um, I think that kind of sets the stage and then the new, the new baddies are really cool. I don't, uh, you know, uh, Razagus friends, the other incarnates, uh, they're, they're just really cool looking characters and they're personified uh, pretty well in the, in the cinematics we've seen for them so far. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's, that's kind of the problem with just telling a story in a game like, wow, is every player is going to have different experiences with it and approach it in a different way. The content comes out when it comes out and it's like, you have this balance between we have to tell, do something engaging in this current content, but also like pay off players long-term investment in it. So that's, you know, that's a, that's a tricky balance to strike for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the neatest thing about the zone, though, is obviously if any zone is a new aesthetic, they get to do underground caves again, which they haven't done in a, a few, many expansions now uh, for people to actually get to see these large underground landscapes. And the last one they did was really cool, um, which we've actually talked with devs quite a bit about uh, the tools they developed and the stuff they worked on to try and do an underground space and make it look good. Uh, we get new... Uh, races and we get to visit old races so Drogbar are back which jason was just talking about with the uh, nelth slayer dungeon uh we get to see the drug bar again although they've obviously been up resed and look a lot prettier and have all the new skins and stuff which is very nice we also get to gotta have pretty drug bar i mean if we're gonna yeah. have well, i want my drug bar to be as pretty as possible that's please. right they have, th their gems have to shine extra bright that are growing out of their skin yeah um yeah. <laughs> the uh the niffin are also a new race that's down there they're like a vol people uh, that you get to sort of meet up with and help out with, sort of like a m underground mole mole men kind of idea. 
Um, you're going to drag. Super cool design. Super I cool love it. I, yeah. The 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 little races are. I always get a kick out of. You know, um, the Niffin. I'm I'm optimistic that they're going to have a, a a special place in the pantheon of the small races. You know. Yeah. Um. If we can't ever get Grumbles back, then give me some mole folk, I guess. Oh, that reminds me, actually, talking about getting back. I went and did a, a Halls of Valor last week, and Meatball showed up the moment I entered Legion. I always yes. smile yep. every time Meatball comes running up. I'm like, oh my god, mm -hmm. Meatball, I haven't seen you yeah, in he's forever. He's still there if you had him. Yeah, oh. you're, if, you had, if, if your bodyguard still works in, yeah. uh, in Broken Isle, so oh, yeah. Yeah. That... Yeah, meatball meatball got a, a glow up, you know, with the yep. new uh He did. The, he looks totally the new different. Model. So like, yeah, oh, he, I didn't recognize him at first, <laughs> yeah, but yep. it's him. Yeah. Uh so but the Niffin, yeah, I'm I'm still hoping that we get to see uh baby Niffin at some point or like a Niffin pet or something that sort of runs around and follows you. I want a little little Niffin dude. Be kinda yeah, cool. that'd be cool. Uh there is dragon riding inside of the caves, so they confirm that. You get to fly around in these like expansive caves with stalagmites and stalactites and all those sorts of fa fancy things. Um avoiding all those and weaving through. I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of races that they'll probably add down there that'll be crazy to try and complete. Something that I spent a lot of time doing last week was the races. Um getting you mean riding. getting stuck on trees. Is that what you Oh doing? my god. Well, or no, I mean you do the advanced ones with like the orbs that you fly into that stop you or all sorts yeah, of things that slow yep. you down and I'm on the reverse courses now. That's what I'm doing now. <laughs> all of the, the different courses that go backwards. Yeah, um, some of those are really weird. It's like this is this is it definitely feels backwards. Yeah. 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 Um, and then of course we're gonna have the new raid, right? And the new raids gonna be kicking out the Ab Abarus, the Shadowed Crucible, and uh, it's looking like a the nine bosser. Yeah, it's a nine boss raid. So we'll have to see how that feels for players. Uh, I I still think this is a good number. I think as soon as you as long as you stay below ten bosses, you're probably doing well as far as a dungeon goes. So as far as a raid goes, so uh, I'm glad to to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, Man, it's uh, yeah. I agree. Like eight, nine bosses is kind of that sweet spot for me. I think, um, as, in a world where a raid lives for like five or six months, yeah, right? yeah. And like, what did what was what was um, Sepulcher? Was it twelve or was it thirteen? I think it was twelve. And that, I mean, yes, we had the season four kind of wackiness kick in, but that season was only what March to August or something. That yeah. was like a five month season for those twelve bosses. Like, yeah. no, that's that was just too much. Um, you know, I I expect that Abarus is going to present a more comprehensive challenge than Fault of the Incarnates did, but I'm hoping that we're not diving straight back into sort of the terrible arms race that we ended up in raid wise at the end of Shadowlands. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be really telling, I guess we'll get, you know, once we start getting in here and seeing what these fights feel like, we'll sort of have a, a, a handle on, on where the encounter team is at. And, and I think it'll tell us a lot more about the, the ongoing direction of the game than vault did. Uh, vault was pretty obviously designed to be easy. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think, um, the, the the raid size looks good to me, especially in a world where we know we're getting more updates and we know that the updates are coming fast and furious with this expansion. Like, yeah, this this raid may only live until like October, you know, maybe yeah. November, yeah. Uh, something like that. I, I mean, I think November probably is more realistic, but who knows? I didn't I didn't think this raid would be out in May. Um, and that's a lot of pressure to put on teams to, to have, you know, okay, you have five months here, go get everything you need out of this entire raid on four different difficulties with, you know, more than nine bosses in it. Yeah. I think, I think nine, nine feels more doable than, than some of the bigger raids we've seen. Yeah. Uh, so the, the other, th other thing I want to mention about this place is that it's three different biomes, basically with two and a half. You have like your lava biome and you have your crystal biome and then somewhere in the middle, that's where they meet. And that's kind of like a, 0.5 biome that exists um so I, I like that when they do zones like this uh it is different biomes so it actually feels like you're traveling through a larger space uh, it's really easy for them to do like a timeless isle type thing where it's kind of like here here's just a big grassy island that everyone is on right here here's your content and the content is one biome one set of creatures one area as soon as you do these different areas you can start bringing in different types of creatures and have different challenges and stuff feels bigger and more vast and like you're traveling distances and like you're in more of an alive world so i like that we're seeing that with this patch content that it's not just one kind of default space that you're hanging out in it's going to be kind yeah. of diverse and neat that way it helps tell a story and you know just the environment itself tells a story and then it provides you know uh just sort of a, a way to, to bring in different flavors of, of 
stuff to fight and just yeah. variety for the player to kind of look at. So yeah, that's cool. I mean, they, they put out a whole um, roadmap along with this post, which is kind of funny because it's really just like a two week process and it's not anything we're not used to, but um, you know, we, we know for sure that May 9th is the kickoff of the season, right? So you're not doing Aberus before May 9th. You're yep. not doing season two PVP and mythic plus um, before then you're not, Either you're not going to have access to the tier sets before then. Um, we also did find out we, you know, we knew there were going to be um, public events like the Farak assaults, where like the uh, the fire incarnate will show up and start yeah. setting stuff on fire. It that will of, not oh, start Patch Week. Yeah, it reminds me of having the flyovers back in Cataclysm, where you mm -hmm. just chilling inside of a zone and there's Deathwing flying over the zone, killing yeah, right. everyone inside of a path, right? It reminds me of that to a certain degree. Yeah, it's, it, it seems to be sort of taking inspiration from that. Um, so yeah, we know those won't be kicking off patch week and that'll that'll come the following week. But, you know, there'll be stuff to chase from those events in terms of MOG or potentially, you know, even gear power for, you know, uh, outdoor players and stuff. But it will be a lot of stuff to do on patch week. You know, obviously the quests. Um and you know the the stuff in the new zone yes um there will be some of the new weekly activities will be available even though the the events aren't coming in but the sniff and seeking thing we talked about a little bit and there's yeah. apparently a snail racing weekly activity which i assume you do with the drug bar i'm i'm really <laughs> that hoping that cool. it's very slow racing i'm hoping it's a short distance you hop yeah. on a snail and it's like literally a snail space <laughs> race that you have to do right it's it's, it's for all the people who hate jumping puzzles and really dislike having to really right. focus on movement. They put a race in that's like just for those people. Like I like, can't yeah, deal with the dragon racing thing. Yeah. I just not. It's exactly. just, I can't handle the pace. I need to do a snail race. Yeah, and the snail um, race just feels right. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently we're gonna get access to the new uh, dragon riding mount, the winding slither drake, which is awesome looking. I, I figured I would just be like ride or die with my Highland Drake, but. Mm -hmm. I don't know the slither drake. There's something about it that really speaks to me. So I, I might have to switch it up. Um, we talked a lot about in previous episodes, the item upgrade system with the flight stones and the crests yep. Yep. that does come into play patch week, May 2nd. Yep. Now the crests you acquire the, how you acquire them is difficulty locked, right? You can only get a powerful crest that gives you item level equivalent to a heroic or mythic activity by doing those things. Yep. And you will not be doing those the week of May 2nd, but it might give you a leg up if you're trying to, you know, get ready to get into raid on the ninth or whatever. You might be able to to get some use out of the stones and crests you can get from the outdoor world that first week and just kind of ramp up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing it, that happens with patch is cross faction guilds, which they put out another uh, whole separate post about. Yeah. So cross faction guilds are going to be kicking off uh, with that May second release. Um, and all right, so basically, they're, they're, the post that put out is play with more friends with cross faction guilds. No longer will you wish your horde heart could find a home with the amazing alliance guild you just cleared a random raid with, nor do you have to don a cheery alliance front uh, after wishing a fond farewell to some fantastic horde players after a successful heroic. We're blurring the faction line for guilds and allowing players to join the same realm guilds with their friends from opposite factions when the Embers of Neltharion arrives up, uh, on May 2nd. Some of the things to remember with cross-faction guilds, uh, guild affiliation with Alliance or Horde will depend on the uh, faction of the guild leader, and the guild achievements and vendors will still reflect the guild's primary faction. In other words, if you have a Horde leader of that guild, it is a Horde guild, and you will have Horde rewards from all of the guild's vendors and whatnot that are out there. Uh, guild members of the opposite faction will benefit from unlocked shared perks, but cannot contribute to specific achievements. As an example, Alliance members of a Horde guild could not contribute to the progress towards the Alliance Slayer guild achievement. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Uh, and guild repairs and social conveniences like shared chat will be available to opposite faction members. Uh, players must be battle.net friends uh, or part of the same battle.net community to invite or receive an invitation to an opposite faction guild on the same realm. Uh, opposite faction guildmates can only play community uh, communally inside instances. They'll still be considered unfriendly to each other in war mode or outside in the outdoor world. Well, that makes things spicy. So there's a couple things here to break down at the end. Uh, the first one being, hey, you do have to be part of a basically. If you want to do the cross faction guild, 
the best thing your guild leader can do is make a community, invite all the people to the community, and then from the community, they can hop into the actual guild. And that's sort of the loophole that they found in their spaghetti code to make this work. Um, because you either have to be battle.net friends with that person or they have to be part of the same community. So one of those two things. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to address was this, hey, you can just kill your guild mates with war mode, right? You can be rolling out in the world and here comes, you know, your buddy who's like, oh, help me kill this elite. And you're like, sure. And you they help kill the elite mostly. Then you kill them and then you move on. Yeah, that's totally a thing that can <laughs> happen in war mode. Well, I mean, um, if you, you know, you toggle war mode on, that's what happens. Yep, so, yep. you know, have fun out there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm surprised how many do actually with running Mythic Plus again, I've run into a lot of people who could not summon because they had war mode on, which surprised me how many people still just roll around with war mode on. I haven't done that since BFA. <laughs> so, yeah. Surprising. Um, all right. Player health and damage increase. We got another post about this from Kymax and says that basically they've decided to increase both player stamina and enemy damage by 25% members in Altharian. Uh, this very much, th this is very much like an adjustment that was made before the launch of Dragonflight and it's for the same reason. The damage mitigation abilities and healing are too strong relative to player health. Uh, the only way to threaten players is to make enemy damage very uh, high and spiky. If healers can quickly top off their teammates and mana isn't a limiting factor, enemies have to be tuned to have the capacity to do burst damage that kills players before healers can react. This isn't very satisfying gameplay, so increasing player health and the tuning the enemy uh, ability damage appropriately gives players more time to react to incoming damage, and it makes players' choices about cooldowns and mana consumption more meaningful. Along with this change, you'll see several adjustments to hybrid healing spells, items, enchant uh, enchantments, as well as percentage-based healing spells. Um, yeah, so in other words, hey, if they're going to bump up everyone's health by 25%, we're going to have to tweak all the spells to make that still work and all the enchants and all anything percentage-based obviously becomes a factor because if you're getting 25% more health, then that affects everything else that's based off of percentage of health. Uh, something like uh, Resto Druids or just Druids in general can have passive healing based off of percentage of health. Um, so that that might have to get tuned to, uh, to fit with that accordingly. Um, and then, yeah, if everything's going to do 25% more damage... You know, that hit that brought you to a quarter of your health is now bringing you to half your health. You're going to probably go down to a third of your, to two thirds of your health based off of the increase to your own hit points. But it'll be an interesting thing to see what happens with this all playing out. It, it seems to me from a, like a, a surface level look, this does nothing because they're increasing damage by 25% and health by 25%. So what does that actually do, right? But when you start thinking about how critical strikes work and how, you know, different um, spells can be adjusted to land harder. I guess they've figured out some math that makes this cool. So I, I don't think it's something a lot of players will notice immediately, but it'll probably be more noticeable in gameplay itself where you're just seeing people get spiked harder and you have to make better decisions when it comes to triage and healing, I guess. Yeah, I think that's ultimately the goal here is, I mean, the rationale kind of makes sense. Although, yeah, it is weird to, if you move everything by the same percentage, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. They Obviously they have math maticians on staff who like tune this stuff the way they do for a reason yeah the rationale makes sense that like it, you don't want to end up in a spot where like we sort of ended up at, at this at this spot at the end of um missa pandaria i guess it was siege of orgrimmar raid like you had abilities that would just take the raid from all you know 100 to zero in a gcd and your healers had to be topping up the entire raid every gcd yeah and it was ridiculous like you can't yeah. it's not even engaging gameplay at that point you're not making any decisions you're just spamming and because of the way throughput is too then you live like that's not that's not really the gameplay that they're trying to create um so i get that and i think it's better to have like it's okay to have maybe somebody who's damaged and not able to be immediately topped up because somebody else is more threatened and that they'll be okay for a couple of GCDs until you can get back to them as long as they don't actively harm themselves. Like, I think that's, that's an okay way to have the game designed, if not a good way to do it versus, you know, everything just being about the arms race of boss damage to heal or throughput. Um, the concern I have here is they just did this in 10.0. Yeah. Like there's, it, it almost seems like there's something fundamentally wrong with combat at the moment. If you have to do this every single patch, something is wrong here. I, it's the only thing I can think of. I mean, yeah. uh, I, at least as a player, right. And my perception is that 
there are factors that they're not accounting for, or there is something wrong with the way that they're balancing and tuning this game. If the solution is, well, every time we drop a major patch, a uh, player stamina goes up 25% and the enemy damage is adjusted accordingly. Like it doesn't make any sense. And they never did that before. So I wonder what is causing them to run into this particular problem lately where this is like, this is quickly becoming a tradition. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens over the life of Dragonflight, but like, I think it's a bit jarring, you know, to have your stam. I I mean, the enemy damage is not really going to be something that the player super notices all the time, I guess, because like you're either going to take damage or you're not, but like having, having your stamina like ramp up so much all the time is kind of weird at at a certain point. I don't know. I, I, I wonder if there's some way they can, this is obviously like a band-aid kind of a fix it seems yes. like to me so i wonder if there's some way they can avoid that going forward but just in the mode that we're in right now all they can do is say you know what just crank the you know crank the dial and we'll you know hopefully we'll have a longer term solution in place someday yeah i think that's exactly i mean i was i was going to say this is a band-aid fix this feels very much like a we don't have enough time before this content releases to actually properly address this issue And trying to reduce things by 25% in both categories, which I assume would have the same effect, might be more complicated because of how that affects items and other boss damage and ability damage and how things are tuned going into uh, the new raid content. So it could just be a situation where this is, yeah, as you said, the Band-Aid fix. And hopefully for the next patch, they have something much larger uh, sorted out, maybe even a squish that'll take place. Um, to sort of resolve some of this. It, it is weird to start to see people's health pools and everything inflating into the hundreds of thousands and damage numbers floating up into you know a much higher range than we saw previously in other expansions. Um, that is a normal thing to sort of see develop over time, but it's been weird to see that happen so quickly in this expansion. Um, and this obviously just makes that problem even larger. Uh, so it, it'll be... So we're not getting back into the, you know, your pyroblast hits for 1.4 million damage kind of situation again, right? Uh, that, that to me, will be a, an odd place to kind of get to if we start moving back in that direction. Uh, and we'll probably see a squish at some point. So we'll, we'll see how they deal with it. But I'm, I'm with you. I think this just feels like a Band-Aid to throw on to make sure gameplay still feels right, even though it's weird to do the, the fix in the first place. <clears throat> okay. PGR development notes for 10.1. Uh, obviously a ton more class tuning and set bonus tuning and stuff that happened with that. That's normal. Uh, we're going to see a lot of that still happening over the next week and a bit. And then obviously we'll have like a, a pause during the May 2nd week and May 9th week. And then we'll see another huge pass on the you know week after that. Um, it still seems odd to me with them releasing all three difficulties at the same time because it was such a rhythm and routine for them to have a heroic week do a pass of tuning based off of what they saw in the heroic week. Then mythic comes out and that's really the like pressured thing where you don't want to touch the dials too much when myth- once mythic comes out. Uh, whereas in this case with all the raid content releasing at the same time, we're in a different situation where if you do tuning the second week, that might really affect some people's progression that they did in the first week. So uh, I'll, I'll be curious to see what their actual rhythm feels like for doing tuning once raid content comes out. Um, you know, we just talked last week about how Resto Shaman Healing got nerfed by 5%. And it's just that case of you don't want to see those things happen in the second week or a mythic week of raid where people have really committed down the line with a particular character. And now you're seeing dramatic changes that really affect, might affect the decisions that they made around, you know, choosing to play that character or gear that character or work on that character. So, yeah, it's it's a sticky situation that they could get into. So I'm curious as to what they're hot fix class tuning boss tuning will look like in the uh, opening weeks of this raid. Yeah. I mean, for me, I guess the big question is like, what is the benefit of doing the simultaneous release of those three difficulties? Who benefits from this? What is good about it? And I'm not sure that there are answers that the player base is going to enjoy, you know, like it doesn't do anything for us. It just, for teams that are pushing mythic prog, it makes everything more confusing. They get a worse product to start with because there hasn't been a heroic week of tuning and everything. And, you know, there's confusion about how to even utilize your time uh, among the three difficulties. Yeah. And for non-mythic progging teams, like it really means nothing, essentially. Um, so I'm not, you know, like, are they releasing, the? they're doing a simultaneous release because they think it benefits the mythic teams. And I don't, 
I don't know. I, I can't imagine that, that most people in that bucket would be like, yes, this is what we want. This is great. The, the, the results are so much better this way. So I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, there was a, a, obviously there were a lot of tuning changes that came out in the build uh, notes yesterday tied to the change we just talked about, about the, the player health and enemy damage changes. Yeah. Um, so a lot of tuning around that and just, you know, I mean, it was just a laundry list of tuning changes and they're still tweaking, um, still tweaking set bonuses and stuff. I got to say like, uh, Prot got a nice uh, ignore pain buff if it holds up, and the the set bonus has gotten tweaked and and really been been tuned up a bunch. So if the, if if this stuff ships in that state, I'll be pretty happy to get my my new set assembled and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, there's still a long road to go, right? Like tuning doesn't stop when the patch ships, certainly. And I mean, that's the other thing too with the the way that the classes and specs are constructed, they have so many different dials that need to be adjusted on a regular basis. So because of all the talents. Yeah. So yeah. it's, um, you know, it's kind of a, just a, an ongoing forever process, except probably in the immediate wake of a patch about to ship, right? You just lock all that stuff in and go, okay, we'll see you after patch. And, yeah. and that's kind of where we are right now after the week before last round. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that went in and started tuning up and making sure things were feeling right was obviously the new dungeons that are going to be rolling in with Mythic Plus uh, in the new season. So Freehold got a huge pass of nerfs and changes and fixes and you know, things like Captain Eudora's Grape Shot Leap will no longer jump to a location she's already been standing at. And you're like, oh, okay. So some little tips you might be able to learn from things like that might be kicking off. But just in general, sort of thinking about what these dungeons will look like in Dragonflight once they get ramped up to being Mythic Plus. So Halls of Infusion, Uldaman, Underrot, they all got some tweaks and changes to abilities and making sure things actually work properly. Um, Halls of Infusion, Primal Tsunami no longer uses Rogue Waves. It's just like they just removed the ability on Mythic Plus because they felt it wasn't working the way they wanted it to. Um, Stacks of Infuse are now reset between intermissions. That's a huge thing where they're making sure that these dungeons are completable four players once they start pushing them up to higher keystones, right? That seems the big the big deal for this season is that it's the dungeon's actual abilities, not affixes, that should be preventing players from uh, completing these this content and seeing changes like this kick in where even they're looking at the abilities inside of the dungeon, how they're going to scale and deciding if there's something that needs to be changed ahead of time is nice to see. So I'm, I'm glad they're going through and changing up this stuff. That's good to see. Yeah, also the visual updates. I think the visual updates are huge, even for like BFA dungeons. You know, like the more time goes on, the the more our expectations change, I feel like, around these mm. systems. And like we expect that we can see like what is bad and what is not bad, right? And what the difference right. is and where we're supposed to go. And you know, BFA wasn't that long ago at, at this point. I mean, five years, you know, BFA will be five years old this summer. Like that's not forever in, in terms of wow's history but it's long enough that some of that stuff is kind of moldy and you look at the stuff that they changed like um uh like trothak right like the tune in sharknado dude three second sharknado and and an updated visual on sharknado like these are important changes i think for our expectations in 2023 versus 2018 so yeah making sure that um, sharknado looks like a sharknado is crucially important i agree mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and uh, right, and and also just to know, like, okay, this is this is safe, this is not safe, right? Yeah, like that's, yeah. and and some of that stuff was not, it wasn't called out back even but two expansions ago the yeah. way that it that we expect it to be now. So, um, I, I mean, I like what I see here in terms of them trying to get out in front of this stuff. My expectation is that there's going to have to be a, a lot more of this. Um, I, I mean, you think about the amount of. I mean, geez, just even go back to season three Shadowlands, right? They pretty much like rebuilt um, Tazavesh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. you know, in terms of making it a Keystone dungeon and making it feel right. Season four, we saw a lot of tweaks to returning dungeons, like older dungeons into the pool. And then we saw a similar kind of touch on season one dungeons. So, you know, I have no expectation that they think that they're done with this stuff, but um I do, I do think like overall they're trying to go in a more player friendly direction for season two. Yeah, uh, which I appreciate as a player. I would yeah. like it to be friendly. I, I want to do these <laughs> dungeons and I want to have fun. Um, so I, yeah, I, I like what I'm seeing and and I have confidence that 
they're not going to let problems with tuning, layout, visuals persist over the course of the season. They will get fixed because we've seen it. We've seen it happen over the, the entire last year plus of the game. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks. That's going to wrap up this episode. Uh, we always love hearing from our listeners. So if you want to you know, send us some feedback, you can feel free to do that. Um, and you can do that over at the starting zone at gmail.com. Uh, but I want to take a moment here to thank our patrons. They contribute a ton to our show and uh, help us improve on the content we create. And today I'm going to give a shout out to Arajian, Celian, Kapawi, Max, Mibble the Mighty, Nick, Shorl, Viper14, and Zalius. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give, as well as everyone else who supports our show through Patreon. We have new patrons this week. We have Azuma, Tregas, and Jennifer D. Thank you so much for hopping in and supporting the show. Three new patrons is amazing. Thank you again. Uh, you can find our Patreon over at patreon.com slash the starting zone. If you're someone who wants to hop in and support the show, help us produce these episodes every week, stay on at least a reasonable schedule. I know we haven't missed a week, so that's been good, but it's, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't plan on, on missing a week. We'll, we'll record at 11 PM if we have to, to sort of make sure we squeeze one in, uh, it'll happen, but it's just one of those cases of being consistent as, as we can and, you know, we're working on a, a bunch of stuff behind the scenes for the show. So looking forward to uh, to getting that stuff online. But thank you again to all of our patrons. Absolutely. Welcome, new patrons. I'm so glad that you could uh, support the show and help us, you know, deliver the product that you expect. It means a lot and it goes a long way for sure. So welcome aboard and, um, you know, feel free to say hi in Discord if you're so inclined. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, like you said, you know, it's um, it's been it's been a struggle. Like we're into we're into mid April now somehow uh, already of 2023. This whole year has been, I, I think, a challenge to put the show together on a week to week basis in terms of scheduling, finding windows to actually record where we can focus on what we're saying, <laughs> and, <laughs> and like deliver a, a a product that is you know. To our that standards. is, up, yeah, up to up to the standards <laughs> yeah. that we expect from from ourselves, and, yeah. and that the audience expects from us, and and uh, the pay, the patron support is is very important in making sure that we can carve out the time to do the show, that we can make the show sound good, and that we can you know put the show somewhere where you can download it whenever you want to, um, you know, the, the, all that stuff adds up. There's a cost to all those steps of the process, and and patrons really help us, you know absorb that cost and 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 deliver the show so so thank you yeah and if you folks have enjoyed the show and you want to support it in a different way you can consider heading over to your itunes and apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review they really help out our show we love reading them here from our listeners and they, yeah, they really boost us up those charts so this one comes in from geek yetis is what i'm going to say this as i think uh, it's geeky tez it could be geeky tez okay we'll go with i geeky believe it's tez. geeky tez all right geeky tez. geeky tez from great britain entitled family fun uh gr awesome show you guys do a really amazing job. Me and my mom and my dad and my partner all play WoW together, but it's nice to have someone who isn't my mother explain game mechanics to me as a relatively new player. Amazing podcast, and you guys do an incredible job. Well, thank you so much, Geeky Tez. Uh, man, I, I mean, playing with the whole family, I'm I'm envious of that. That is, uh, I, my, my parents were the ones who always told me to get off my computer and go socialize with people because they couldn't understand that playing in a massively multiplayer online game with 30 other people who I was talking to on a regular basis back in the vanilla days uh, was socializing for me. Um, so yeah, it, uh, I, I, I am envious that you have uh, a whole family that you get to play with. That's amazing. And I hope you're, uh, you're doing well. Thanks for listening to the show. Yeah. It's uh, that's such a, a cool situation to have. It sounds like a lot of fun. So yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for checking out the show. Thanks for writing in. I'm glad we could help you out. And I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you not to listen to your mother. No, nope. okay? yeah. that's not that's not what I'm here to do. So I think <laughs> I think when your mother explains game mechanics to you, you should absorb that and understand that, and and you know, take her direction certainly. But we're we're glad to help supplement. You <laughs> yes. know, I, I mean, mom mom knows best probably, but you know, we're we're here to help too. <laughs> that wraps up episode 574 of the Starting Zone. If you want to get show notes for this episode, to leave us a comment on the show. Head on over to thestartingzone.com, the official website for the Starting Zone podcast. If you want to contact the show, leave us your feedback, or uh, you can write us an email over at thestartingzone at gmail.com. You can reach out to us on Twitter, or you can find us, as Jason mentioned, in Discord at thestartingzone.com slash Discord. And if you want to get your hands on some VSC gear, you can find that over at T Public. That's teepublic.com slash stores slash the starting zone, where you can check out all the designs on shirts and mugs and stickers and all that kind of fun stuff. And Jason, where can folks find you on the interwebs? 
best place to find me is over on Twitter. You can find me over there at Shieldwald. Um, I haven't really been posting over there a lot, but I do read it a lot. So I guess if you want to talk to me about something, I will probably see your message. Um, unless you're mean to me, in which case I'll block you. <laughs> but if you want to have a nice chat, like I am over there, if you want to say hi. Uh, and um, you can find me streaming well on twitch.tv slash Shieldwald and youtube.com slash Shieldwald. Although streams are kind of on hiatus here, I think, until patch. I, you know, again, we're doing one raid night. I that Last night I played the game for two hours flat and I was done, so... I think streams are probably officially on hiatus until patch, but then we'll be, you know, we'll be doing patch stuff for sure. So check out the video channels as well. If you want to say hi over there. Yeah. If you're trying to find me, you can find me on Twitter at Spencer underscore Downey or on uh, Twitch at twitch.tv slash Spencer HD and on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Spencer HD. And with that for Jason and myself, we want to say thanks for listening and jobs done. <laughs>